Hi there, I'm Philip, and this is a quick introduction to the Git version control system. So for this tutorial, I'm going to assume that you know how to use the command line and that you have Git installed on your computer. So when you type git, it actually runs the program. So let's say we're in a directory called my project, and we're going to create some new file. So I'm going to create a file called notes.txt. And let's say I'm editing notes.txt, and I'm going along, and I want to save a backup because I want to remember what I just did. So to save a backup, it's pretty simple. I say copy notes.txt to notes.txt.backup1. And now I have a backup that's identical to notes, so I can keep editing it and adding to it. I save it. And now let's say I want to save another backup. So I copy notes.txt into notes.txt.backup2 and I keep on editing notes.txt. So maybe I want to delete these notes here and add more notes down here. And once again, I want to save another backup. So notes.txt, notes.txt backup three. So you can imagine me going on and on with this, um, saving more backups along the way. And this gets pretty annoying because conceptually, there's only one file I care about, right? There's only notes.txt, but all these backup files are just kind of littering my, sub uh, my directory here, um, we, I don't really need them. So the git version control program is designed to solve this problem of eliminating all of these backup files while still keeping all of the old versions in notes.txt or in any file you write. So to start using git, um, we're going to run a command called git space init space dot. So this initializes a new empty git repository in dot, which is our current directory. So um, if that runs correctly, it'll say this message. And now the next thing to do is we want to add files into our repository. So let's actually remove all the backups because we don't need them anymore. So notice that there's only one notes file. And the command we're going to run now is git space add with the file name, notes.txt. OK, so we've added the file to the git repository. So if we type git status at any time, it'll show us what um, the git repository knows. So what this means when I run git status is that it says changes to be committed. And it says new file notes.txt. This means that we ran the git add command to add a new notes.txt file into our repository, but we haven't committed the, um, the action yet. So uh, in git, nothing is really saved, quote unquote, unless you commit it into the git repository. So to commit, we actually run a uh, command called git space commit. And uh, the usual command line options here are dash a, which means commit everything that I said I was going to commit, which is what git status shows. Git status shows what should we commit when you say commit. So it says um, the thing to commit here is uh, adding a new file. So when I say git commit dash a, it means uh, commit everything I want to commit. Dash m means I'm going to write a message for my commit. So after it, I put a space in quotes and say, this is my first commit. Yay. And I end the quote. Now when I run this command, it will actually commit my changes to the repository. So it runs and it says uh, I made a commit. So if I run git status now, it says uh, nothing to commit. I already committed everything I can. So if I uh, ls now, notice that there's still only one notes.txt file. But if I do ls-a, there is a secret hidden dot git subdirectory inside and I can ls into it. And this is where Git keeps all of the version control information for um, the repository I just created in the my project directory. So we do not want to mess with this directly. So let's get out of here. Um, but I just want to show you that it actually exists and it's, it's here. It's within our current directory. It's not some other place. OK, so now let's say I start editing the notes file. So let's say I add some um, notes here. Add more notes down here and another note and another one. So now when I save the file and quit, I've actually modified notes.txt from the version that I added in the repository. So to see what changes I made, I run a command called git space diff. Diff means difference. So when I press enter, it will actually show me what has changed in the previous version of the file. So the green pluses mean what have I added since the previous version. Notice how I added three lines of text here. More notes, another note, another note. Right? These are the new things I've added that did not exist in the previous version. So if I like this change and I want to keep a backup of it, instead of copying, say, notes into notes backup, what I can do is I can actually commit another version. So when I say git dash commit dash a dash m again, 
um, second version. This will actually save this version as a backup. So I did it again, and now when I ls, there's still a notes file, but now I actually have two versions of the notes file. And to see the different versions, what I can do is I can type git log, which shows me a log of both of the versions. So the first commit here, we had the message. This is my first commit. This is the first version of my file. The second version, I wrote my message here. This is the second version of my file. So I actually have two versions of my file. Even though it looks like I only have one file here, notes.txt, Git is keeping multiple versions. So let's say we want to do a third version. So I edit notes.txt. Let's say I want to erase um, these things from the beginning. And uh, let's say I erase these as well. So I just keep the bullet points. So now my notes.txt file is pretty small. Once again, I do a git diff to see what has changed. And notice now that these things appear in red with a minus sign in front of it. So red with the minus sign means that I used to have these lines of text here, but in my current version, I've actually deleted them. I've gotten rid of them. So now the only thing is left is this, uh, these three bullet point things here. So um, at any time, I can do a git diff to see what has changed in my files. I can also do a git status to see what files have changed. So notice here that um, the notes.txt file has been modified. So if I want to commit this change into the repository as a new version, I do once again git commit dash a dash m message. So my message is I deleted a few useless lines, end quote. And now it's committed. So when I do git log to see all the messages, notice how git log prints out three commits now. We had the initial one, version one, the second version, version two, and this version, version three. So Git is keeping a history of all of our versions of our file. And we can actually um, run other commands to look back at the old versions. Um, but I won't cover that in the basic tutorial. So in the very basic usage of Git, in, in sum, what we do is we do a git init dot to start a new Git repository in our directory. We do git add to add some files to it. We do a git commit, usually with dash a dash m with a message, to uh, commit our changes. We do git status to see what the status of our repository is. Um, we do git diff to, uh, to compare the current files uh, against the latest version of the repository. And in future tutorials, I'm going to talk about uh, how to use git for multiple users. So remember this is the most basic use case of Git, which is one person on one computer um, creating files in one single directory.